Hey guys, what's up? We are back here with another video today, and today we are doing our Washington, Michigan preview and prediction. Guys, it's here, the final game of the 2023-2024 season. Washington and Michigan, number one and two, two undefeateds. That's all we have left. That's all we have left. The last two teams standing, and the two teams to claim the 1997 national championship each share a half of that share of the national championship but claim the full thing uh washington and michigan that's it so make sure you hit the subscribe button down below hit this like button if you enjoy the video and comment your thoughts and opinions let me know your score prediction and who you think is going to win this 2024 national championship it's going to be a heck of a matchup as the playoff semifinal games were both great, great matchups. Just like last year, really it's kind of interesting that the last two years of the playoffs, we've had its best matchups um, almost in its entirety. Um, obviously, last year's national championship was terrible, 65-7, terrible blowout. Um, but really when you look at this matchup, you're looking at a team in uh, Michigan and Washington – there isn't a really heavy favorite in this game. Uh, compared to TCU and Georgia, there was kind of a... Uh, TCU wasn't severely outmatched by that many points um, but in the in the Vegas odds. But in this game, it's going to be a close game. It is. And Michigan's going to be favored. I forgot the line. Uh, I didn't look up the line to start it off. But um, it's going to be a close uh, game, I think, line-wise. Money line wise, I think it's going to be close. Um, but when you're looking at this matchup, you're looking at a Washington team that has three dynamic elite wide receivers led by Romeo Dunes um, and just a quarterback that in Michael Penix that just continues to impress me more and more and more because the dude just has arm strength. The dude has a great job at layering the ball um, all across the field. Um, pretty good at reading coverages. Uh, not his forte, but still pretty good um, at reading coverages um, and just has dynamic wide receivers. The Michigan defensive secondary is going to have a tough time. Uh, when it comes to guarding these wide receivers, uh, as was evident all throughout the Texas game, um, when you had a Washington team uh, that on the very first play uh, for, for them from scrimmage, dot down the field, 77-yard uh, rece reception by Jalen Polk. Uh, just a great ball on that post route. Uh, and a even better finish by Polk there. Uh, but on the other hand, you have a smash mouth football team that has great offensive and defensive lines. That's Michigan. Michigan's led by C uh, J.J. McCarthy. Uh, McCarthy could enter the NFL draft of this game. Uh, it's kind of going to be interesting to see where he ends up going. Um, but we'll see where it comes, uh, what comes of that. Um, but when we're looking at this game, uh, we're looking at a Michigan team uh, that has a lot of offensive firepower um, in some regard. Um, they have Donovan Edwards, but more importantly, Blake Corum at the running back position. They have an elite offensive line. Uh, this, these three team, or these two teams combined for the last three Joe Moore awards, with Michigan winning the previous two, Washington winning this year's Joe Moore, Joe Moore Award uh, for the best offensive line in the country, uh, and Michigan. Uh, obviously, Zach Zinner uh, lost from uh, got injured in the Ohio State game, so still a loss there um, at the guard position as he was an All American, a great player, uh, one of the most experienced players on their line. Uh, but again, I don't like it's a loss. Don't get me wrong, uh, but I don't think it will make or break this game one way or another. Um, when you look at the keys to victory, we'll start with Michigan as we're talking about him now. Um, number one for Michigan, you got to have time of possession. Um, you can't give more time of possession to Washington, a team that has the ability to score at any moment of the game, any moment. Um, Michigan has, they have explosive capabilities, but not the same amount of explosive capabilities that Washington does. They just simply don't. Um, when you're looking at, um, when you're looking at the second key, sorry, when you're looking at the second key, you can't have turnovers if you're Michigan. Uh, and this goes for both teams, but particularly for Michigan. Uh, it, Michigan ha is much worse when they turn the ball over two or more times in a game. Um, but if you're 
if you're getting Washington to turn the ball over two, three times, if they're matching you for turnovers, then I think it's okay. But I think Michigan, those turnovers hurt them more than it does Washington uh, because of their explosive capabilities. And number three, uh, you got to control the trenches all game long. You got to be able to get after um, uh, Michael Penix. If he's under pe- pressure, obviously any quarterback's going to be worse under pressure. Um, but particularly with Michael Penix, you can't give him all the time in the world because he's going to find an open receiver uh, and he's going to hit, or even not open receiver and hit him right in stride, uh, right where they need to be hit. So you need to be able to get pressure there on Penix. It's going to be essential that you do so. Uh, and then you also have to protect J.J. McCarthy and be able to create holes in the run game. Those are the three keys for the Wolverines. Uh, starting off with Washington, uh, the first key, you got to keep Michael Penix um, you got to keep Michael Penix upright. Sorry. Uh, just like Michigan's last key, you got to keep Penix upright. If you want any chance at winning this game, you can't get Penix in this really uh, collapsing pocket. It isn't that Penix can't be mobile and stuff like that. He can throw on the run. He has the crazy arm strength. But the thing is, is this. If you're consistently having him in a bad pocket, then it's going to make it a lot more difficult for Washington to be able to win this game. Uh, point number two, you got to keep the explosive plays on Michigan down. You have the ability to explode at any point, but at the same time, you got to stop them from making their own explosive plays. Uh, and what I mean by that is you can't, throw 11 guys in or 10, 8, 9 guys in the box let's say 8, 9 guys in the box and then have a running back break a long run or let J.J. McCarthy find an open receiver off to a zero blitz on man coverage uh, you can't let Michigan have explosive plays, you gotta make them methodical uh, you gotta make it um, where they're getting their ball and they're just slowly, slowly moving down the field um, because I think if Michigan's slow and Washington's fast, that is going to hurt Washington a little bit, but I think Washington will be able to recover because Washington is a decent run team. They don't have like the same run game that they've had in the past before, but it is still an extremely good run team, um, relatively, relatively. Um, then the third key for Washington, and this is the one where I was kind of back and forth on, kind of unsure of what I wanted to have because really it was the first two points. Uh, but the third point for Washington, um, they're not the favored team. Um, so I really think that you need to win in the third capacity of this game, and that's special teams. Uh, you can't be giving up blocked punts, uh, maybe getting a blocked punt, maybe um, – getting a kickoff that gets all the way into Michigan territory or stuff like that. You got to be able to win that third phase of the game. That's going to be critical for both teams, but particularly for Washington, being able to win in that third phase of the game uh, is really important for both teams, uh, but I think Washington more decisively. So when we're looking at this game, as we close out this video, Washington, highly explosive. Michigan, dominant physical powerhouse. Jim Harbaugh, broke that ceiling with beating Alabama. And the reason why I'm kind of being slow about this is because even though I have my prediction, I'm still going back and forth on this because I think that any team can win this game. I think it's anybody's ball game when it comes down to it. But when it comes down to that final decision, when it comes down to that final prediction that I have to make for this 2024 season as it's completely flown by in my opinion, it's going to be Washington. It's going to be the Washington Huskies. I really, I watched that Washington team play Texas. They looked fantastic. They looked explosive. They looked pretty decent on defense at some point. Uh, and to be honest, they really let Texas hang in that game way longer than they should have. They only allowed Texas five offensive plays all third quarter, all third quarter, five. Um, so this is a Washington team that also can play some dominant um run heavy stuff when they need to uh, and they control the time of possession for that uh, game against Texas for the most part. So I think this Washington team has what it to take and Caleb DeBoer, man, he is a heck of a coach. 
heck of a coach. So that's going to wrap up today's video as we wrap up the final video of the 2024, 20, or 2023-2024 college football season. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Like this video as always. And maybe check out the merch down below for the football expert. As always, have a great day. Bye, guys.